and the police have reinforced their men here and all of the equipment here, hoping that they are able to calm down the situation. I see a lot of distraction as well to the chief palace where the incident occurred. And so uh, this is what we're picking on the ground, as I speak to you. Again, uh, basic schools are not uh, functioning today because of the security distressing in this particular area. Basic schools not working, I, I suppose that probably businesses have also closed because they fear there could be attacks. Exactly, as you said. There's no economic activity in this particular area. I could just, by my uh, eyesight, count just one or two people selling food stuff. But of course, there are no persons standing by or walking by to get anything to it. Really, it's just a hold down of a community as we speak. Mm, painting a picture of an easy calm, but you're also telling us that the police has uh, reinforced uh, security, as it were. Can you paint a picture for us, for instance, if there were 100 police officers, how many are they now, and are they armed? Well, I, I see a number of armed security uh, personnel here, particularly the police service, where they are uh, SCU vehicle and the reinforcement from the district as well. They've been here at the chief uh, palace ensuring that they're managing uh, the security. I know a lot more of them are in the community ensuring that they're maintaining uh, the country. Yes, heavy, heavy, heavy handed armed policemen in this area for the past 24 hours since the incident occurred yesterday. Let me ask you two questions in one to wrap up our conversation. Do you know whether more people have been arrested, including the rapists that the police has been looking for? Well, this morning, I'm told that several others have been arrested as well. The vehicle, I'm told, is onward to the regional capital Koporidia for screening and further investigation. So this is the processes that the police are doing currently. Thank you very much, Yvonne Ikwe, for bringing us updates there. Keep an eye on it and bring us the latest as and when it happens. Now, leaders of organized labor are this afternoon clad in red bonds as they begin processes to organize their members ahead of their nationwide protest slated for February 13 in opposition to the 15% VAT on electricity. Although the government has indicated its decision to withdraw the 15% VAT, Labour says the government has failed to officially communicate the decision to members. Organised Labour is expected to notify the Ghana Police Service later this afternoon ahead of its nationwide demonstration. Labour correspondent Daniel Poko is monitoring the situation for us. He also joins us live on the line with some update. Uh, Daniel, what can you tell us? Right, so good afternoon to you, Beatrice. Uh, basically, I, I have I have decided to move to some of the ministries across some of the ministries in Greater Akasi currently, and also move to the offices of the Trade Union Congress where organized labor had to meet. They had a meeting over. Um, this what I have seen and identified is the fact that they have branded red armbands and also hanging um, red flags and all that. That's what has been happening at the Office of Peace and Congress. Now, when we went to the ministries, unfortunately, we could not find any red armband at the place. Just um, We also got to know that some of them were have some of them don't have proper briefing with regard to the need for them to demonstrate or even for them to wear red armbands. But the, the discussion is that by the close of day today, hopefully a lot of them will get a lot of information. And also from tomorrow going, you'll have a lot of them putting on the red armbands, and others also will be in their red attire. But basically, at the case in Congress, you have a lot of them who have been wearing their red armbands. That's to send signals to government that government should withdraw the 15% tax. Daniel, some clarity for us, though. Yesterday, the news went viral that, indeed, the government at a cabinet meeting uh, decided or considered dropping the 15% VAT on electricity. Uh, has any of the officials there confirmed whether or not, indeed, uh, this is something that has been communicated to them even ahead of the protest on the 13th of February? So when, when I spoke to the leadership of organized labor, what that said is that they had to receive an official conversation from government after that news conference on Friday. And they are also reading on social media after this conference or so after the cabinet meeting on Friday, government has unanimously agreed to withdraw or suspend the implementation of 15% VAT. But officially, labor has not received anything and they have folded their arms patiently waiting on government for government to be able to present an official statement to them. We are also gathering that there is supposed to be a meeting that close of day tomorrow 
tomorrow, which labor has indicated that they will not sit in any meeting with anybody until the government withdraws the 15% VAT. So currently, they have not received an official pay statement that they are waiting for the government to do so. Thank you very much, Daniel Poku. We can hear some details from Joshua Sa, who is Deputy General Secretary, uh, Secretary General of the uh, TUC. The government had really uh, withdrawn the, its decision to, 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 to actually uh, put 15% VAT on the electricity bill. It's prudent and think that you should officially communicate to organized labor. Then organized labor, you will use that communication to reconvene. It's um, a meeting to uh, actually discuss and take another decision. Because we said in our first communicate that the only thing we want is a total and unconditional withdrawal of the 15% value. So if it's really truly withdrawn, officially government should communicate to us. Then you use that one to also call off our intended uh, action on the 16th. But as you said now, since we have not received any official communication, our program and project still continues. That's why we see us in red, because we said that we're going to start uh, wearing red bands and red arms, and uh, you can see our offices cluttered in red. Yeah, so we are going to continue until uh, an official communication received for us to take a second decision. We decided in that meeting, at our, in our first communique, that we are not prepared to meet with any minister, nor government, or anybody until the 15 percent vote is withdrawn. So if it is withdrawn, they should come straight right to us officially that it has been withdrawn. You heard right there, Joshua Sa, he's Deputy uh, Secretary General for the TUC. We can also hear Angel Kabonu, who is President for NAGRAT. That we are, we are still at the situation we were on Friday. As we speak, government have not sent any official letter to organize labor. So we just hearing that there are certain new points in the uh, social media. But social media it's a free highway for information that anybody can make or have this information because we don't have any information to so come. So you, you still stand by your lab? Absolutely. So what, what has been the preparation so far? Yes, uh, as I speak to you, leadership is preparing the information letter to be given to the Ghana police, mm -hmm. uh, which will be done by 12 o'clock. Uh, offices are, gra are gradually opening and for me, within a few hours, we'll be mounting our red flag in front of our office. And as you can see, I am in, uh, uh, in, in red. My finance officer, Mr. Lamke, is in red. My other officers, when they come in, they are going to come in in red. And that is what's happening in almost all the union offices and secretaries. Are you, are you not sending fears? Yes, sir. No, we are just showing our displeasure and our anger at the fact that government is beginning to uh, down us with taxes unprecedented in the history of this country. Angel Kabono is president of Nagrat, a member of the organized labor protesting the 15% uh, VAT on electricity. Let me bring you that news item that caused the stir and it has to do with concerns over the weather conditions in Ghana and reports emerging that the air quality here in Ghana uh, has uh, become poor and Environmental Protection Agency is raising alarm over unhealthy levels. Now, this has sparked concerns, as I said or potential respiratory challenges let's look at the data put out by the epa since 23rd january the chief weather forecaster at the ghana meteorological agency felicia ahafiano says the current weather conditions are a cause of concern because of the amount of dust in the atmosphere she spoke with emmanuel samani listen to the details for now we have uh, a lot of causes that cause the air unhealthy for us but then the most significant one for the season is the dust that is coming from the Sahara Desert over into the West African sub-region and for that matter for Ghana. But we have other sources that are also causing the air to be a bit uh, harmful for, for us. Uh, for example, the chemicals that we have in the vehicles exhaust and then uh, those that do the 
uh, the manufacturing companies and then the industries also release these chemicals into the atmosphere. The fortunate thing is that those ones, we don't readily see it with our naked eyes unless we take a measurement before you know whether the air quality is good or not. But then during the hammer tanks, we have the dust coming in to worsen the situation. So uh, they also have their chemical components that also contribute. So um, for now, we have all this thing coming together, combining to bake it a little bit and healthy. From our part as a metrologist, uh, the dust itself is the uh, the cause of the reduction in visibilities, which is a solid uh, particles, which in a way is not healthy for humans to breathe in into their lungs. It's likely it may be carrying some pathogens or some parasite or some uh, disease causing agent that we can heal, and then later it may develop to, to something that will affect us. Felicity Ahafianyo is Chief Weather Forecaster at the Ghana Meteorological Agency. Samani joins us live on the line now with some updates. Samani, uh, what can you report? Hello. Samani, what more can you tell us about the weather situation in, in the country? Right, many thanks, Beatrice. So um, I've been interacting with the Ghana Meteo, and they tell me that we should brace up for worsening weather because uh, the weather is only going to get worse as more dust expected to come into the country via the Hamatan. So what we're currently experiencing is a re-emergence of the Hamatan, really. And so uh, they advise individuals with uh, respiratory conditions, for example, asthma, bronchitis, COPD, to be wary, wear their nose mask, hydrate, stay indoors if need be, so that they can be protected and all of us can be protected as well. Thank you very much, Emmanuel Sumani, for bringing us updates then. Speaking of the Hamilton, Irama Smith reports from the Western region that the weather condition is in full force. Over here in the Western region, the Hamilton is in full force now. So definitely it's affecting the air quality. For now, we can't tell the level that we are in because the EPA uh, in the Western region is telling us that they are still uh, doing the calculations. But I have been speaking to some residents here and they all say breathing is now difficult. The comfortability is, is way lower and it's, it's not pure air that we are breathing in. You could see that there are um, some substances in actually the air that we are breathing in. Really dust and air. Though they are not, they are not um, we can't see them but we can actually see that the air that we are breathing is not actually a pure air. It has changed a little bit and it's like you feel like carbon dioxide has also mixed with uh, the fresh air that has previously we received now. When I was in the States, I used my inhaler, but it was like, you know, just when I need it. But here, I got to use it every day. So my family is constantly sending me inhalers, you know, from back home. So yes, the air is no good. It's a bit difficult because the sudden hammer tan gets our nose to be very dry. Yes, yeah, so breathing in is a bit difficult, but then they are adjusting to the system. Um, it hurts my nose though. I mean, my nostrils feel so hurt. And sometimes I feel so dried up and then, like it's, it's sometimes difficult for you to breathe in. Especially we working out at the gym. Sometimes like you, you do some reps and then you're trying to catch up with your breath and it's very, very difficult. Today I nearly choked on some water though, so it was there with me. But I think it's no good right now, so I don't know what's happening. But Air pollution and all that goes on around us, especially on campus, has made it... It's not comfortable when breathing in, yeah. Sometimes even in class, yeah, there's dust and all. Yeah, so it makes it difficult to breathe. Sometimes even when no smart in class. You heard a Western Regional Correspondent, Irama Smith, uh, interacting with some residents of uh, Second D Takradi. And she joins us live on the line now. Irama, what more can you tell us as regards the severity of this very case in your region? Right. So when you come to the Western region, the Hamasan is in full force. And um, as you would know, uh, the weather has seen dramatically. So... Many people are complaining about having um, breathing difficulties. 
I went to the EPA to try to assess the situation here, the, the quality of air situation here in the Western region. I was told that uh, they are still calculating it, so I'll go there later today. But I uh, speaking to some residents within the Sekedi Sakwade metropolis, the, the general saying was that breathing has now become very, very difficult. One asthmatic uh, patient told me that now he uses more inhalers than before. So generally, this is the situation here. Breathing has become quite difficult. Thank you very much, Rama Smith, uh, bringing us some more details as regards the Hamatan and how people are dealing with it in the western region you're still here on the midday news or 3fm uh, our top stories police on manhunt for more suspects who attacked officers at kwewu bimpong destroying public property we've also brought you that report and you just heard their concerns emerging over air quality here in ghana as epa recalls days of unhealthy levels sparking concerns of potential respiratory challenges stay with us we'll be back in more Freezer, the Diaba, Adam of Wadiaba, a freezer, Adamba, a queer for Semencia, Adamo, Adama, Adama, Metamosua, my sorry, Canino, Obom Wasia, a new friend of Nobia Munumi and San Lassa Nine, I said what we did up as yet. Adam of Wadia, we are from what we say, Yadia Druba Cope, a bit of we be a high technology, a couple of freezer, Wen Kuan, and once open your fifteen letters, no Fugum, what's here, no Fugum. You can't resist. And you're still here on the Midday News on 3FM with me, Beatrice Edu. Now, the livelihoods of several farmers at Abriwapong in the Asante Achim North District of the Shanti region are in limbo following the alleged sale of their farmlands to a foreign company to plant bamboo. The planting farmers say they will resist any attempt to deprive them of their sources of income. Some of the farmers spoke to my colleague Ibrahim Abubakar. So, sir, 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 so one she and KBB and Chile will be in and crop for any forest for now. Either say, Ye Mugune Wukumuhan, Yasibeto, and as you win as a beto, Ye de Muja, Ed Beto, or CD and an animal, Edo Muja to all, Emma Gana, Ebeshe Hornomene, Yabeto Swa, Yenye Bia, Yesu Eke. Now, the district chief executive for Santia Chim, North Francis Oti Boating, has also been speaking about the development. The Eco Mongo Company came to the office with their documents. But we inspected their documents and realized that they have acquired the land from the Forestry Commission. But one issue is that the Forestry Commission did not consult the assembly, neither did they consult the community or even the chief and people of the community. They said they have a community liaison officer, but they have not met the community before. So I think. All this engagement should go on before there can be a um, proper solution, before he can even get his peace to concentrate on whatever he's doing at the Drapon uh, Electric. But nevertheless, after meeting the people and meeting the Eco Planet Management, we have scheduled a day to meet on next Thursday with all the stakeholders so we can make sure uh, there can be a win win situation. What is going on is that the 
the management of local planet want to take over the land and deprive the people of Agrapon of their livelihood. But we are not going to accept that. We will make sure the two will coexist peacefully without any shortchanging in any affairs at all. So what we are trying to do is that after the meeting, we will know that we are sure that there will be a very good solution. In fact, the man was come, he was trying to bring two things on board. He was talking about compensation and he was also talking about how we can engage the community. So I can now realize that it's now coming down. They have seen the fire that is coming on him. And that was the chief executive, uh, district chief executive for Asante Achim North, uh, Francis Oti Boatin. Now, this looming health crisis on the University of Ghana campus as students decry the poor state of sanitation. The situation is as a result of the strike by the Teachers and Educational Workers Union, which has led to insanitary conditions with rubbish scattered at various points on campus. Judith Brown is there for us. She joins us live. Uh, Judith, can you paint a picture for us how the situation is on campus? Well, right, Bishi, so currently I have been moving to various points on the University of Ghana campus, and the pile of rubbish gathered there is quite appalling. I've even seen some students sitting on lovers' benches, and they're sitting in dirt practically, trying to study, and it's, it's a very bad situation for these students. I walked personally into some of the washrooms as well, and that was nothing to write home about. And so for the ladies' washroom, when I walked into, uh, the place was really bad. The stench was unbearable. And the, the look of the place was horrible. It hasn't been cleaned for about two weeks, as some students have told me. And so you can imagine for ladies using such a washroom, the types of infections that they can get just by using that place. Because for two weeks, if a washroom is not clean, then that's a very bad situation for them. So these students are really calling on the government to come to some sort of agreement with uh, the striking units, that is the senior staff association, as well as two. So that these people can come back to work. And I've even spoken to some of them who say that they wish that the UGSRC could gather the students to clean the campus themselves because currently the situation is not good for them. So this is what they have been saying. So the environment has been like this for about two weeks now since they were embarked on industrial strike. Um, it is really affecting us in so many ways. When we go to our washrooms, they are unclean and we can't even use them. And you can see the environment is very dirty. And you know, this can cause um, respiratory diseases and even viral bacteria infections. So I'm calling on government to um, come into agreement with TEU and the other unions so they find solution. And also, until then, a management of the University of Ghana should be able to do something. But my problem is with the UGSRC and the various student leaders on campus. I think this is the time that they need to show their leadership. Um, they should they should be able to organize students. Um, you know, currently continuous students are on vacation, vacated um, on this weekend. Mm -hmm. So there are 100 students on campus. We can come together and clean the cam uh, clean campus this weekend or every weekend until government is able to find a solution or management is able to find another alternative to this. And you heard uh, some students at the University of Ghana campus uh, talking to Judith Brown about the insanitary conditions there. Let's get a quick update on the tour of the northern region by uh, the flag bearer of the NDC, uh, John Mahama. Komla Kluche is with him. He joins us live. Komla, can you give us a, a brief update? Well, John, John Mahama has just uh, concluded a meeting with the overlord of the, of, of the Dagban Kingdom, Yana Abubak, Yana Abukari Yakub the, the second. Well, John Mahama, um, in speaking to him, the Yana actually admonished him that, yes, of course, Dr. Baumia came to visit him uh, and he had admonished him that he should, you know, uh, uh, go ahead and do the campaign and consider your mama as a brother and the campaign should be devoid of betrothal, insults and all that. Well, uh, with, 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 with regards to uh, what he was expecting your mama to do, he says that he knows he's done it before, he can do it, and that he hopes that he's not coming to a rich family with more money. Mm. But uh, John Mahama, in responding to him, said after after the NDC has left, left office of eight years, 
He is surprised that the NDSO does not have water. Uh, a project they started before they left. And he is assuring the Yana that when he becomes president, Yana will not be thirsty anymore. Uh, it, this is what John Mama had to say to him. If we have the sound, we can play. Thank you very much, Kumla Kluche, bringing us an update of the tour of the flag bearer of the NDC, John Mahama, who is in the north. Thank you very much. And that's how we end the news here on 3FM. Our top story is police on manhunt for more suspects who attacked officers at Kwewubipong, destroying public property. We also brought you that story about organized labor readying, readying itself uh, with red bands as members uh, push through threats of demonstration over 15% VAT on electricity. My name is Beatrice Edu. Thank you very much for joining us today. Enjoy the rest of our programs. Have a good afternoon. Accra gets busy on this frequency. 92.7 3FM. Hello, good afternoon. This is Business Daily and welcome to this afternoon segment coming up. Interest rates on treasury bills fall for the fifth week running as government records over 58% subscription. Also, Ghana's disinflation process likely to, to be disrupted by impact of geopolitical tensions to global trade resulting in increases in commodity prices. We'll bring you details of the latest Fitch production. And LPG marketers anticipate price drops as the palms as National Petroleum Authority opens competitive tender for LPG imports. Thank you so much for your time. We'll go straight to first story. Interest rates on the Treasury bills market fell for the fifth week running following an oversubscription in the bills by about 58.3%. With a target of about 2.86 billion CDs, government realized over 4.5 billion CDs at the end of the auction. The following three business news desk reports has the details. The auction results by the Bank of Ghana shows a continuous decline in yields following high demand for treasury bills. In the past weeks, demand for treasury bills has seen a massive surge up to over 100% over subscription. Government has been leveraging the high demand for T-bills and has been reducing interest rates on the market, although marginally, as the T-bills market remains the only source of funding for government to meet its weekly refinancing obligations. In the latest auction, government realized over 1.6 billion CDs more than its target of 2.86 billion CDs and over subscription of 58.26%. A chunk of the bids were from the 91-day bill, although all bids tended were accepted. Yields, however, continued the downward trend, declining to about 31.39% from 31.79 for the one-year bill. For the 182-day bill, the interest rate fell from 31.09% to 30.79%. And for the 91-day bill also, there was a decline in yields from 28.59% to 28.29%. Market watchers predict continuous decline in yields in the coming weeks following an expected decline in inflation for January 2024. The decline in yields, although marginal, implies that government is gradually on the path to reducing its cost of borrowing. 
That was a three business news desk report. In more stories, Ghana's declining trend in inflation is likely to be disrupted by geopolitical tensions. That's according to ratings agency Fitch Solutions. The UK based firm says an escalation in geopolitical tensions could disrupt global trade, leading to further increases in global commodity prices. The following news desk report has more. Fitch Solutions is forecasting upside risks to Ghana's interest rate projections. According to its latest article dubbed, more interest rate cuts on the way in Ghana following cautious start of easing cycle, it said an escalation in geopolitical tensions could disrupt global trade, leading to further increases in global commodity prices. As Ghana is a net importer of both fuel and food items, it stated that such an increase would raise the cost of imports and disrupt the disinflation process. Fitch also said there's a risk that negotiations between Ghana and its commercial creditors will stall and take longer than is currently anticipated. This would delay the International Monetary Fund's subsequent disbursements and weaken investor confidence, resulting in a sell-off of the CD and a resurgence of inflation, it explained. In both scenarios, the UK-based firm said the Bank of Ghana would embark on a more conservative monetary easing cycle than we currently forecast. That was a three business news desk report by my colleague Bismarck Aousa. Away from that, liquefied petroleum gas marketers are anticipating potential price drops at the pumps as the National Petroleum Authority unveils its new open competitive tender for LPG imports. The NPA says the decision is subject to LPG imports to a bill. The decision subjects LPG imports to a bidding process and is to reduce cost and ensure efficiency. Speaking to three business, Vice President of LPG Marketers Association of Ghana, Gabriel Kumi, says he anticipates that the maiden auction will boost LPG consumption in the country. We have been very persistent and consistent in our call on government and the MPA to ensure that the price of LPG comes down so we can know enjoy the benefit of uh, high usage of LPG. Um, like we always say, the consumption of LPG over the past three years has been on the decline. And this is as a result of the fact that the product uh, price is so high, the pump price is so high, uh, that the, own, uh, the, the consumers are not able uh, to purchase the product. Uh, hence, the, the consistent decline we've seen over the past three years. So any move by government or by MPA to ensure that the product comes, the price comes down is a welcome news to us. We are only cautioning that um, this move will indeed translate uh, into lower prices at the pump so that consumers can enjoy, so we can all uh, increase the consum consumption of uh, LPG in Ghana. That was Vice President of LPG Marketers Association of Ghana, Gabriel Kumi. Now, Chief Executive Officer of the Ghana Chamber of Construction Industry is urging the Ghana Standards Authority to impose stricter sanctions on companies caught using low-quality materials in cement production. This call comes after the GSA's recent crackdown on several cement manufacturers for violating quality standards. Emmanuel Cherry, highlighting the severity of the issue, argues for the full rigor of the law to be applied to deter future misconduct. It's a conscious effort that has been done by certain manufacturers. They just are evil element among us that the law must deal with them accordingly, as simple as that. The genuine ones in the market, they are still doing their, their legit business and then doing what is expected where they think that they cannot bear all the uh, losses, then they slap it to the consumer. And that is the reasons why you see of late, the prices of cement product has increased a bit upwards because of what? the cost of importation, the cost of freight, the cost of exchange rate, the lending rate in the market, the oil productions and what have you, all those things as a contributor factor has caused the cement manufacturers to increase their prices upwards a bit. Those are the genuine ones. But as you and I know, there are bad news among us as well. So as so long as they have been fished out, let the law deal with them accordingly. 
now sh I'll shift your attention to taxes as the energy sector and the energy sector as executive director of Eureka Energy Solutions has raised a red flag on imposing additional taxes or levies in the country, especially on the energy sector. Dr. Yusuf Suleimana has cautioned imposition of any additional tax or levy has the potential of being counterproductive and increased non-compliance. The money that's going to come out from it, I don't think it's, it's going to serve or go into any climate change fight whatsoever. We already have something we call uh, sanitation and pollution levy or whatever. At any given point in time in this our current economic dispensation, I think any new taxes being introduced within the system is going to be counterproductive. It's going to be highly destructive and the government should rather find better you know, ways of showing up the revenue than uh, keep on piling up taxes. I think that's not the way to go. First of all, we have a lot of undesirable and nuisance taxes out there. Even that, how much compliance do we have with respect to the existing taxes? Uh, I would have recommended that the logical thing the government could do would be to, to put the shoulders to the wheel to ensure that the existing ta tax handles that are, that are flying out there, we see how we can get people to comply with that. But any attempt to introduce new taxes will only increase non-compliance. It could, it has potential to increase non-compliance. That was the voice of Executive Director of Eureka Energy Solutions, Dr. Yusif Suleimana, ending Business Daily here on 3FM 92.7. For more business stories, kindly check out our website, www.3news.com. My name is Menu. A photo, stay tuned. Black Rasta will soon be here with Urban Blend. Ghana, Africa, and worldwide. Join us on Inspirational Gospel Mix this and every.